Reggie Miller for the kickoff. Low liner. Slaps past one man. Vic Johnson on the run at the 15. Stepping, sidestepping around a couple, juking a couple, breaking tackles. And down he goes at about the 36. Gang tackling first in. And in there was Mike Brock, a six-foot junior. Central scores at a 54-yard actor to Miller pass. At the 8.33 mark, Central with Miller's extra point goes up 14 to 10. It was a 72-yard, seven-play drive at 3.27, including a gambling fourth down at a foot play at their own 38. And they rolled the dice and came up with a big one. They made it on fourth, and then they scored on third and four into the football, touching the Generals' own 35. They were up 10-0 after one. They haven't scored since. They've got some dangerous people out there. Tom Packer is the fullback. George, the tailback. Hand off George, and he's around the right side, breaking tackles. Down the sidelines, it goes into central territory before going out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Packer, the fullback, injured on a block, but it's a pickup of 18 on the play. And George now has carried for 45 yards, eight carries. Solid speed there. George around the left end, right end, really turned the Jets down, down the sideline. 17 officially, stepped out at the 44. And again, Tom Packer, the fullback. Boy, he's small for a fullback. He's 175, but he's 5'5", five five, so small as far as height. And he is limping off with an ankle injury, and they're going to carry him off. Farrell Ferris also injured the ankle. And you don't think head coaches don't do everything? Mike Elkin is over actually taping Farrell Ferris's ankle right now. The right ankle of Farrell getting taped up here so he can get back in the ball game. They need him on defense, too. He's a good linebacker. Right now, Hopkins is at a backer. And I was trying to check the other one. Right now, Sipple is the other linebacker. Dan Sipple playing with Aaron Hopkins, that linebacker. Central creeping a couple of their secondary players up. Hand off to George, flag down. He's down to the 40, lowers his head inside the 40. But again, flags are down. When you sit in the backfield like that, you think about illegal procedure or illegal motion. George Gaffel, the... Referee getting the signal from the linesman, and it is illegal motion. So that'll make it first of 15. Move the football back to the Indians' 49-yard line. The Lafayette, they have been penalized now three times for 15 yards. Into the central defensive front is Robert Bowman, who had a big 18-yard quarterback sack. He goes in for Mike Massler. Madison Central down 10-0 after one. Scores on a 30-yard halfback pass to Steve Evans in the second. And on a 54-yard Acker to Miller pass over the middle. Reggie racing the last 35 or 40 yards after breaking away from the log jam of Lafayette defenders. First and 15 generals back to 49 of Central. Handoff. And not much there at all. Matter of fact, a loss. They fake to the first man through. The quarterback, go ahead and hold on to that football. He sure did. He faked the dive to the fullback, then to the wingback. And Martin carried the football, and the stop was made by Boggs. And we have Boggs down and injured. May have been hit in the stomach area, and looks like he had the wind knocked out of him. Loss of two on the play by the quarterback, Martin. Martin dropped that ball, Greg, and picked it back up for, no, for nothing. It was a mix-up in the sec in the backfield, I think. Second and 17 now. Clock underneath seven minutes. Then a third period. Central leading, 14 to 10. Really hard to describe, Bob, how poorly Central looked early on offense. And they really were in trouble of being way down. Fortunate they were down a couple of three touchdowns. They... They were really giving Lafayette every chance in the world to make it a runaway early. Complete turnaround here. Boggs is up and okay, running off the field under his own power. That's twice that Boggs has been down, but he's back up. Talking with Mike Elkin, Roy Evans, one of the assistants on the sidelines. Gary Ford, the former EKU linebacker out of Louisville, pacing the sidelines, the defensive coordinator. He's got to be happy the way his defense has played all year long. Here, back to pass, 
versus Martin. They go on for the long one down the sidelines. The tended receiver stretched out, couldn't get it. Jeff Neal's pass was a little bit to the sidelines as he was angled in over the middle. Good coverage down there. Dean Turner and a whole bunch of other ones down the field. Steve Evans, Chris Cruz in the area. That'll make it third down at 17. Three of 10 for 45 yards and two interceptions. Last week in the big 21-7 defeat of Corbin Martin was three of 10 for 98 yards. Third down conversions, 33.3%, the two of six, and they face third and long here, third and 17. Central will throw the safety net on them here. Houchins, Cruz, and Evans ranging way back. And Antoine George running to the 45 of Central, and that is it. George picking up six on the play. He's now at the 50-yard mark on nine carries, and it is still fourth and long, fourth and 11. Let's see if Jeff Neal will drop back to punt here. Wouldn't think they would gamble. Acker leaving and teammate coming back out of the field. That is uh, Robert Bowman again. And also another lineman coming back on, Terry Boggs. I think they may have been on now Bowman coming back out and Boggs in. So Bowman just had a run out to the huddle and back out. And they get their punt return team in. Twin returners, Houchins and Cruz. And they're angling for the sidelines with Neil the punter. Central just running away from the ball. It's heading towards the end zone. And it is batted back. And they got it before it got to the end zone. Player was down there to bat it back. I thought the thing was headed for the end zone, but fortunately for Lafayette, they come up with it to pin Central back deep. And this will be interesting here because the Central offense will be tested here not to make a big turnover. As Lafayette gets a break on the way, the football bounces. As they put the football down, we'll try to mark exactly where it is. Hard to read from here, but it looks like it's back behind the five-yard line. Probably about the three. 5.48 to go in period number three is Acker, who's taken over for Cruz at quarterback, has guided his team from a 10-0 first quarter deficit to a 14-10 lead here in the third period. We are 5 8 of the way through this one. Let's call it the four official. Simple to center. Elkin was in for him momentarily when he was injured. Speller back of the eye, big no front of the eye. Bicknell gets the call, running laterally right and not getting much at all. Matter of fact, they got a safety on the thing. Can you believe that? He was running back into the end zone and got caught back there. Well, you don't run laterally back into the end zone. And there was an indication of a safety. And if that is indeed what happened, it's 14 to 12. And we've got another injured Indian. I believe I saw the safety signal come up for more than just the generals. I think the... Uh, the officiating crew gave it also. They're conferring about something down there right now. It looks as though the injured lineman is Travis Lynch. Boy, the Indians have been the players with the injuries tonight. We've had the news for Central fans is good. It was not a safety, even though a couple of officials indicated the old hands together over the head safety signal. They're going to say about the one foot line is where Bicknell was dropped. A loss of three for him. The football is back at the one at second and 13. Central leads at 14 to 10. Clock is now back and clicking. Underneath five and a half minutes of the game. Steve Evans wide out to the left as they go left to right. Two tight ends, Dyer and Sean Evans. Acker, the quarterback, he's going to pass out of the end zone. Intended for Steve Evans, he angles in, and is it intercepted? It is a scooting, sliding interception by, I believe, if I catch the number right, Jeff Neal. So Neal, a backup player in the secondary, anticipating the pass and getting it. And it's an interception at the 28, let's call it the 27 officially. And so Lafayette for the fourth time has it deep in central territory to begin a drive, and yet they've only come up with 10 points. 
So that's the second interception thrown, or the first interception thrown. Third mistakes, and here is a driving hit and a fumble. Central, I don't know if they're going to say he gets the football or not. Oh, what a hit by Aaron Hopkins, the linebacker. No fumble. As they give it off to the running back, Antoine George, he is hit way back at the 33, a loss of six in the play. But was he hit one-on-one? -on -one? Wow. Madison Central's defense is setting the tempo right in Vic Johnson's face. Ooh, that one hurt. Ooh. Was that Johnson instead of George? That was Johnson. Johnson carried. Okay, I thought it was George, but it was Johnson. He's carried uh, now three times, and he doesn't have any yardage. Here's a handoff. This time, Antoine George, he gets four out of it to 29, but they're still behind what they need for a first down. Down to the 29. Started at the 27, so they've got third and 12. Steve Dyer. Steve Dyer to make the stop the right end, 6'5", senior. And we have a timeout for just a second to the officials. Antoine George needing his helmet and head strap worked on, chin strap. And George Gaffel, the referee, doing that for him. And now the clock running again. 14-10, your score. Central with a 54-yard acker to Miller pass to go on top. And now third and 12. Lafayette, as far as third down conversions, two for seven. Back to pass, Mark, looking down the field and throwing, and it is knocked down at the last minute by Joe Houchins. Out there wide open was Johnson for a second. Vic thought he had the catch, and all of a sudden a hand, and then a body flew by. And it was Joe Houchins with a great timing play out of the secondary from his quarterback position. Thought for a second about an interception there, but ended up knocking it down, playing the safe route. At the 29, it is fourth and 12. As Neal brings the play in from Tom Fee, the head coach in his second year after 17 years as an assistant. And he'll check out towards his bench. Johnson will come this way. High formation behind a new quarterback. No, it's Martin still in there, Martin. Martin turning, throwing this way, and over the head of Johnson. Coverage provided by Eric Thomas. Johnson up the ladder, not high enough, though. And Central's defense does the job again. They've been burned only once. They did their job in the field goal so that legitimately they've given up seven points. And that was on a one-play, 20-yard pass after a fumble. Very impressive here. Very impressive. Very much like Matt, uh, Eastern Kentucky's defense last week in the win over UT Chattanooga. They really didn't give up any points themselves, per se. The defense saw the offense sent the table for them. Central takes over at the 29-yard line. Acker hand off to the tailback, going around the left side for a yard or two. That is Rob Richardson. Getting a couple out of it. It'll be second at eight to 31. Richardson has carried six times for 14 yards. Butler twice for six. Bicknell twice for one. Ferris has carried eight times for 21 yards. Through the air tonight, Central three of eight. Miller and the two Evanses have both made a catch. 114 yards, one interception by Acker. One of those passes, the touchdown by Speller, the halfback. Turn Acker to throw. He got Miller over the middle, who just jumps up and catches it with that good height. And it's out to the 46, 47-yard line. First down, Indians. Well, the Indians are fired up. They got their tails kicked by Madison High. They're back to prove they're a much better football team than they showed over at Madison Memorial Field last week. 6'1 Miller showing his athletic ability on that catch there, jumping up over the defender and making the reception. 70 yards on two catches by Miller. That one for 16. First down Indians at the 47. That is first down number seven of the evening. 2.23 on the clock. Third period, 14-10 Central. Acker. The quarterback, handoff, Richardson coming around the right side, trying to outrun everybody. He's inside Lafayette territory and runs out of bounds at the 41. But Robert 
Richardson with a nice run there as he was able to turn the corner. He had good lead blocking out there. One of the blocks by Steve Dyer. I saw the other receivers out in the area also. Steve Evans, Reggie Miller. Let's give him to the 40 officially. Pick up on the play of 13 for Richardson. That's the best run of the night for Richardson. Matter of fact, he was at 14 yards. He's up to 27 now on seven carries. Came in with 59 yards, 34 against Tate's Creek, 25 against Madison. Ball at the 40 in general territory. Central hoping to open up a lead. They're up by four now. Open up a margin. Acker, late pitch. Speller catches it and drives forward. Helmet clashes with Helmet down to the 38. As Brian Zonka had his helmet collide with Spellers. Speller with eight yards rushing. Football to the 38. That'll make it second down and eight. Lafayette hasn't been able to get anything going here in quarter number three. At the end of the first half, they took over at their own 35 and at Central's 27, and they have come up empty-handed. Central's defense superb tonight. Second down and eight at the 38 of the Generals. Clock at two minutes to go. Acker looking, throwing as he's hit, and it's over the head of Miller. He was under strong pressure. Good rush there by John Rogers, the left tackle, 5'8", senior. Oh, John Rogers, a good name, huh? Former Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> Out of South Carolina. Who is he still playing with the Saints? Redskins. That's George Rogers. Redskins. Yeah, who's John Rogers? He played for Nebraska? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, George's. George Rogers. That was a guy from South Carolina. Third down eight. 38-yard line of Lafayette. Acker has an eye behind him. One of the linebackers shooting the gaps. Play action. He's hit from behind a drop. They fake the handoff, and somebody didn't catch a block because David Biroshik from the defensive end was unblocked, and Acker, all of a sudden, unknowing, found Biroshik crunching him from the backside. Acker up at okay, but he loses seven yards. Back to the 45, and the Indians will have to punt. Somebody missed one right there, missed a the block. Acker has lost 14 yards on five carries tonight. But he has come off the bench to take over for Cruz and get the team moving. Simple to toss the football back to Evans and whistles delay of game. Central a little unsure on getting that punting team out on the field. Those are mistakes you can get corrected. A little mix up there, and so they'll march the football back to the midfield stripe. Sean Nees done cork one here. 44, 20, and 45, the punts tonight. And if you average that out, it comes to, oh, what, what would we say, about 36 yards or so? 36.3. Came in averaging 38. Everything good, and a short kick. But it's going to come down there. Johnson comes up, takes it at the 15, and he tries to pitch, and he threw it right to Hopkins of Central. What in the world was Vic Johnson doing? He just tried to throw the ball to a teammate. He should have fair caught the ball, number one. And then when he caught it, he should have just taken his lick. Johnson hurts the Lafayette cause as he just tossed the ball. It wasn't a fumble as much as a toss to Hopkins. Aaron Hopkins with a pigskin. Well, four big mistakes by Lafayette. Let's take advantage of those mistakes. Well, they should here. They've got it at the 14. Lafayette, with 52 seconds to go, has to turn right back around and go on defense. Acker, long count. Handoff, flags down to Richardson. I believe somebody on the right side of the line moved. Thought I saw something from the... Right side of the line move, and that is what it is. Illegal procedure, or motion, I should say. So the Indians will march back to first and 15 now, back in the 19-yard line. With that five-yard penalty, Central now up to six penalties, 27 yards. Lafayette has been penalized three for 15. Central in the quarter. It's had the football at its own 28, its own four. 
its own 29. Lafayette has had it at the 35, and then the 27 of Central. Yet Central has outscored in this quarter 7-0 for a 14-10 lead. And now gets a football at the 14 of Lafayette. The penalty makes it first and 10 at the 19. First and 15, really. Bicknell front of the eye. Richardson back. And Acker, the quarterback. Play action. Rolls around the left side. Keeps it hit. Down. No gain. Right there at the middle of the play is Ton Snyder, the linebacker. Second down, 15. We're at the end of the third period. 14 to 10 Central and moving. We'll be back in one minute. Turpin Funeral Home is proud of the tradition of excellence.